can you give us some ideas on how to incorporate tartan or other symbols of our heritage into the wedding? That's kind of almost two questions in a way. So I'm gonna, let's talk about the tartan first. Sure. Rephrase it again then. How could you incorporate tartan into the look of your wedding? How could you incorporate some uh, Celtic heritage symbols okay. into your wedding? Are we doing wedding or are we doing wedding and reception? I think it's easier to think about, I, I'd say both. Let's start okay. with the wedding. Let's start okay. with the ceremony. <clears throat> Step one, tartan. tartan in the ceremony. <laughs> tartan in the ceremony. Um, wrap. You can wrap the tartan, little strips of tartan around the flowers. During the ceremony, it will depend on the space you're having the ceremony in. Um, if you're in a high formal church, like a Catholic church or something, they may not be comfortable with you decorating their altar. If it's a backyard wedding or um, a, uh, a naturalistic wedding, or a less formal uh, Christian church wedding or something like that, then having some tartan on the altar uh, is one option. Uh, inviting your officiant to wear some tartan is another option. They might choose to wear a tartan tie, you know, something like that. There is, in fact, a clergy tartan, uh, which they may or may not be aware of. There's things like that you can do. Um, I wouldn't go so far as to having tartan running down, you know, like a carpet that you walk on or anything like that. It also maybe feel weird if you walk on it. as yeah. disrespectful. Yeah, kinda. but bunting... Um, rosettes and along some of the decorations around the pews or if the there's chairs. there's railings, yep. Yep, that's another way to do it. Um, what about the pulpits? If you have a little, like the, the banner thing that comes over front of the pulpit. Again, it depends on the church it's depend whether on, they would want you to yeah, do it's it. Gonna but you can the do something holiday, there. So. Yeah. yeah, so there's, um, there's, there's things you can do like that. You're having a Jewish wedding. You could have some tartan incorporated into the hoopa if you're doing the hoopa. Um, do you know what that is? It's like a, it's, it's kind of a house. It's like a, it's like of course a tent. I know what that is. Yes, it's a tent. Um, represents your your life together and your home together. So it's a, a lot of traditional Jewish weddings. You'll actually have a hoopah. So there's ways you can do that uh, decorating the space. If you're going to do that, you might want to consider using tartan or a tartan-like look because investing in your clan tartan yeah, for be. yards and yards and yards could be a little pricey. <clears throat> um, but there's any number of ways to do it. Um, polyviscose fabric is a good option. Yep. You know, stuff like that. The things we were mentioning about tartan in the ceremony with decorating the space obviously goes for the uh, the reception area as well. And that's probably the main thing you'll do is like having things like table runners um, or bows of tartan on the backs of chairs, things like that. Uh, creating a, a swag of tartan uh, uh, in the entrance where you're going to be coming in to the reception. So you, the photos of you and the bride uh, coming in to the reception, it's like you're coming under an arch of tartan. That can be really cool looking. Um, on, on the table runners, you can actually make them in the forms of X's. Do two per table. Mm -hmm. Make a sort of like a saltire. Yeah, um, yeah. And that, that'd be cool if you had two tartans, one for each side of the family, too. A little busy, sure. but but it would work. So. Or random scraps of tartans to, def, to you know just represent different clans yeah. and all of Scotland yeah. as exactly. a whole. Yeah. Um, symbolism for the wedding. Again, you can keep it very minimalistic, or you can go for broke. Uh, it can be as simple as using... Uh, Clauda designs for your bands, you know, things like that. Uh, it can get into uh, having a look and booth brooch or brooch on um, the uh, the sash of the bride, things like that. The um, the symbolism is going to be idiosyncratic to what your heritage is. Um, for Ireland, the Clauda design is very classic. For Scotland, the the look and booth is very classic. Um, and you can play with those things in any number of different ways. Uh, there's wall art you can get to decorate the altar with. There's, uh, you can uh, have it printed on things as part of your invitations or as the napkin holders on the reception table, all that kind of stuff. You know, there's also just knot work in general. The, the eternity, oh yeah, the, you know, the, the eternity yep. symbolism in the knot work, no end, no beginning, just kind of where it goes around. Mm -hmm. There's the love knots that have like hearts kind of in the knot work and that yep. kind of thing. Yep. There's a lot of, it, like marital and you know symbolism love symbolism in a lot of the celtic cultures period yeah yeah love spoons if you're welsh we should probably do a video series Quakes. on that oh yeah. wait we did yes um so there's uh at least one of us did yes <laughs> hi now the um then uh yeah the, i think the the knot work and that gets into of course doing the the hand fasting with tying the knot guess what the whole expression tying the knot it's celtic Go figure. We invented it. Um, I'll get to my home alone. <laughs> so it's uh, do your homework first. Um, <clears throat> it, it comes down to there's so many options. You're going to want to think ahead, way ahead uh, on this stuff. Don't leave it to the last minute. It's and not like just buying some plastic bells at Michael's or something like that. You know, it's going to take a little more effort. 
to find the stuff you, that feels Celtic to you. And it depends on, as well, how much you want to do. How over the top do you want to be? Yeah. Do you want to have all of the Celtic symbols, period? Um, or do you want to have just a few select ones? It And that, again, boils down to both of your comfort level. Is Do one of you are really, really into it, and the other one's like, meh. I'll let you do something. Mm -hmm. um, if that's the case, then yeah, maybe tone it down a bit. If you're both really into it, have at it and go to Ireland and have a have a wedding in a castle and like do yep. what you got to do to make it your day. The uh, probably the single most popular element of a ceremony, as well as a symbol that uh, we get uh, asked for and that we actually sell, is a quake. Uh, quake is the Scottish cup of welcome. Uh, it very readily evolved into something you had during a wedding ceremony where the um, the soon-to-be spouses will basically take a drink out of it together, either passing it back and forth or some other arrangement. And then offer um, it to the piper. And, and you offer some to the piper. Um, always pay your piper. The, uh, the, the quake is a very cool thing to incorporate into your ceremony, and it also becomes a memento of the event, just like if you do a hand passing, the knotted rope can become a memento of the event that you keep... <clears throat> afterwards oh so yeah let me touch really on one. two things number one the quake started off as like the cup of welcome where right. you, you both it's basically a bowl with two handles you pour a couple fingers of scotch in there and you take a sip and you offer a sip to a, a guest in your home mm -hmm. so it's kind of the hey we're all community we're all just kind of hanging out drinking yep. um it also has symbolism in the passing off of the cup and drinking out of the same cup for the bride and groom at the wedding event itself um i had a whole nother thought and now i forget what it was what was the other thing you said at the end there, before after the quake? As a memento. Yeah, as a memento. Oh yeah, the uh, using the hand fasting stuff. Mm -hmm. If you use the hand fasting ribbon, meaning a, let's say three foot long by you know two inch wide scrap of tartan. One thing that we did that was pretty cool was after the wedding was all done, we got our uh, our the favorite wedding photo that we had, mm -hmm. and we framed that with the invitation with the actual hand fasting piece. That's cool. So it's a neat way to, to have symbolism and the whole experience of the day in one photo mm -hmm. you get to hang and you know mm -hmm. look at during your long and blissful marriage like mine. There you go. Ching. Give me, give me the sound effect, Coraline. Bing. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> um, I, I would like to add a little bit. Um, I think you touched on a lot of the reception opportunities. Um, sure. But I would add that a lot of couples are doing sort of in memory of stations um like during cocktail hours i think if you're focusing on your heritage that's a really good place to honor those who have passed and then you can incorporate tarp tartan on the table there um, or other symbols um and don't uh forget about food if you're trying to give your wedding that scottish irish feel that yep. could be a, another aspect yep. that's uh it, it's worth mentioning that well, for haggis is the only dish <laughs> <laughs> people mass exodus from your wedding Love it. Maybe you want that. And they're gonna, <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, you're ready to just shut just, down the party. It's like, just hey, for it's the drunk time. uncle. Yeah. You know, a huge haggis and you have a fan blowing it, blowing uh. the, the smell <laughs> through the room. Yeah. For those who haven't had haggis, you either love it or you hate it. Mm -hmm. There's very little mm -hmm. in between. Um, yeah. It's worth mentioning that uh, Coraline in uh, another life uh, was or is still a, uh, a wedding videographer. So mm -hmm. she knows what, uh, what the trends are like. I think that's, uh, and from my perspective as, as a heathen, uh, bringing your ancestry into the ceremony and into the occasion is incredibly important. So yeah, I think that's a, thank you for suggesting that. Cause yeah, that's, um, uh, the tartan and photographs go well together. Um, you know, some of these Celtic symbols are talking about, you know, like, um, a Celtic cross for instance, um, or, you know, in my case, it'd be a Celtic sun wheel, you know, things like that, um, can be married to images of the past, mementos of the past. Um, I've seen, you know, photo albums set out. I've seen, um, you know, sometimes on the same tables where people are signing the book saying, you know, they're, they're that they were there and as witness and also giving their well wishes. Um, there's all kinds of things like that, that really work together well. And, um, one of the Celtic things about the wedding is, uh, from a tribal standpoint, is that it is the marrying of two families uh, and two lineages of ancestry, not just two people. Um, that's why people are brought to a wedding in the first place. The whole point of the ritual is that people are witnessing what you are doing to start this next milestone. Well, a milestone is starting the next part of your life. Um, so you're kind of standing on their shoulders. So it's wise to include them. So yeah, that's mm -hmm. good points. As for the food, <clears throat> As Coraline alluded, 
Um, there's various kinds of cakes um, in both Ireland and Scotland. There are different kinds of cakes you would serve. Uh, whiskey, of course, is a huge part of things. Um, Not in here, but yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the cake is, is the main it? thing. But that touches on another symbolism is the actual cutting of the cake. Um, if you're wearing a mm -hmm, kilt, mm -hmm. um, something a cool way to bring in the symbolism, again, which which we did for my wedding, was I had a dirk and I cut the cake with a dirk. Um, if you have a skin do, you can cut it with that. It's going to be a little bit awkward um, depending on the size of your cake and the, the depth of each tier of the cake um, <laughs> because it's a much smaller I'm imagining knife. you taking the skin do and you're <laughs> up to your wrist. It's like bringing out. Uh, here you go, honey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yes, and I think that was one of the questions uh, that we'd had was, you know, is it a thing? Do people really do that? Um, yes, they do. Um, he did it. A dirk is, I think, a better option uh, than a skin do. If you're going to use a skin do to cut your wedding cake, I recommend it be a kind of a ceremonial cut. Um, so it's, you know, delicate and everything. It's like you just, you know, officially cut the cake in half or something. And then, okay, now we're going to move on to the real knife because you're not going to carve a whole wedding cake with a no. dirk or a skin do. That'd be a little ridiculous. Here's another thought. Two-handed broadsword. It's been done. Right through the cake, through the table. Through the table. Yes, there absolutely. You go. There you go. Yes. Okay. You have, like, the, the backup wedding cake. So when you just do that and just destroy it. There you and go. And then you're like, ha-ha, just kidding, honey. It's a great way to start a marriage. <laughs> sure, she would not be angry Well, if you're... Why stop there? Bring out a lockaber axe. You know, it's just like... Whoosh. Sure. Or, like, maybe have a small battle at the wedding... With the culmination being the chopping of the cake. There is actually, a Irish, the first there's actually an Irish tradition of having a fist fight at a wedding. Um, I'd have to ask Brendan what it's called, but there's a, there's a whole... Uh, because different <coughs> factions would come together at a village wedding. They would often say, okay, you guys, let off some steam. And they would actually have a, uh, a faction fist fight during the reception. <laughs> so. Completely random tangential. We're thought. already random and tangential. Oh, I know. So, yeah, it's okay. Shocking. Shocker. Um... The there there's a an Irish tradition, and I'm going off memory, so please verify your sources. I wish we would have done it in the the love series thing. We could actually add it on. Sure. Um, of the wedding bell, for a gift for your wedding, someone gifts you with a small bell, and you take yeah. that home and you leave it on in a main place in the house, whether that's the kitchen table or somewhere where people gather, mm. and as the new bride and groom. If you guys start fighting and you want to end the fight, you ring the bell. You do not admit fault. You do not. There's not a right and wrong. It's just a, I want to just stop fighting with you now. And that's a, a beautiful symbolism in my mind of just okay. getting past it and saying, look, our love is stronger than any fight. We need to stop fighting. Ding, a ding, ding. Rounds over. Ring a ding, ding. Um, ring a ding, ding. Interesting. Interesting. Yes. I, I could see some... I've known some couples where the bell would be thrown to stop the fight. Kelly would never yeah, throw right. anything at me, ever. It's that scar you got. Yeah, oh, geez, you know, she don't even know. Um, yeah, that's a bell <laughs> scar right there. I recognize it. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. yeah, there are there are traditional gifts. Um, so uh, Heather, uh, as a bouquet, is, is, is a memento uh, giving a clock to represent uh, you know the wish for a long life together. Um, the bell, I've, you've mentioned before, um, yeah, I think it's, uh, there's a lot of different gifts you can give. Yeah. Again, that's a whole other topic. Yeah.